protecting America. See some of the new technology being used to make sure we all stay safe from more terrorist attacks. Student pilots are facing serious scrutiny after a 15-year-old pilot crashed into a building in an apparent copycat of the September 11th attacks. I made on your side consumer editor Michael Geeser will tell you what one woman learned when she purchased solar screens. They went on a lot easier than they came off. And a remarkable new treatment for migraines. See how a cosmetic surgery could help stop the pain. That's in tonight's Medical Breakthrough. You're watching Eyewitness News at 6 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, Kevin Jennison, and Dave McCann. Just the knowledge or the thought that one armed Al-Qaeda member is loose in an area is a danger that makes all of the area dangerous. The U.S. began its fourth month of bombing in Afghanistan today, while the search for members of the Al-Qaeda network and Osama bin Laden continues. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Polly Gonzalez in for Paula Francis. Since the September 11th attack, security has been the number one concern of everyone, from the federal government to local neighborhoods. Ahead, we'll show you some of the new Homeland Security technology on display here in Las Vegas. First, though, here's the very latest in the war on terrorism. The Pentagon released videotape today of a bombing campaign on a camp and cave complex in eastern Afghanistan. The bombing destroyed a major cache of weapons. Two members of the Senate Intelligence Committee say there's a growing belief that Osama bin Laden has escaped to Pakistan. And the body of the first U.S. soldier to die from enemy fire in Afghanistan will be home tomorrow. As the war on terrorism continues, the government is considering new methods to help it wage a more effective fight. One of those weapons is technology. Eyewitness News reporter Lisa Johnson joins us now to explain. That's right. As a matter of fact, since September 11th, much focus has been on intelligence agencies' ability to monitor terrorist activity and keep our country secure. Now the government is considering new technology to step up its intelligence and security plans, and it's all being unveiled here in Las Vegas. Since September 11th, the battlefield of the future has changed. I'm using a facial recognition system for computer access. The Department of Defense is currently evaluating facial recognition scanners for airports. We're trying to find out if it is a strong enough tool to catch some people that are not being caught by the current systems. FBI, CIA and other intelligence agencies are meeting in Las Vegas for the first Homeland Security Expo to learn about the newest security strategies. On the back of the card is a computer chip. This is known as a smart card. On this chip, you can uh, store all types of information. This computer chip ID card is used for security access, but it could soon become a national ID card for all travelers. Shared databases between all security agencies are also being developed. Collaboration is important because you want to be able to bring databases from, let's say, the FBI, intelligence agencies, together with like a state database, put them all together and show how they match up or don't match up. Right now, such database sharing isn't being used. Here's a case in point. For the Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City, 80 people already hired have failed their security clearances. Database sharing would have prevented that. The main problem with implementing these systems is the cost. The federal government has allocated money for homeland defense, but states must battle for their fair share. Uh, the governor's with the attorney general to try to uh, look at some of these issues and make sure that we can get access to as much of that new technology as possible to make sure we're as prepared as possible that we can respond the best way we can to any type of terrorist activity. So now the new federal office of Homeland Security must first settle the political battles between states hoping to click into the wealth of new technologies. Meanwhile, National Homeland Security Chief Tom Ridge has just canceled his planned visit to Las Vegas for this week. Ridge was supposed to join Senators Harry Reid and John Ensign to discuss Nevada's security. He was also scheduled to visit the Nevada test site, which is being considered as a possible location for a national counterterrorism school. While we're waiting for that federal money, has Nevada been able to do anything you know, on its own? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I was speaking to the governor's aide, and we have a cybercrime unit that has been created that is using very sophisticated computer equipment to battle cyber terrorism. But the director of the governor's office...
told us while allocating money for homeland security, they must also consider funding for traditional safety concerns, wanting to make sure they have enough money for state-of-the-art equipment for our firefighters and police officers. Okay, tough battle. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. We have new information tonight about the small plane that crashed into a Tampa, Florida office building. A suicide note in 15-year-old Charles Bishop's pocket apparently praised the works of Osama bin Laden. On Saturday, Bishop flew a Cessna plane into the 42nd story building in downtown Tampa. Bishop's teachers say he was a bright, nice young man. Investigators are still looking into how Bishop gained unauthorized ac access to a plane. Local aviation officials say there are safeguards in place to prevent something like that from happening here. Eyewitness News is live. Colleen May is live at the North Las Vegas airport with more. Colleen. Well, Polly, the entire aviation industry has been forced to step up its security since September 11th, and that's why local aviation officials say they think it's not only safe to fly, but safe to take lessons. We're happy to be here, and I'm proud of him, and he's so into it and so excited that I'm, I'm just happy that he found something he's really, really um, involved in. Barbara Holcomb says she supports her 15-year-old son Luke's desire to fly. And as a teen years, he needs something to keep him occupied, and uh, this is it. I mean, uh, this is his life right now. Not only that it's fun, but I want to start early so I can uh, be a little bit more experienced. Luke's dream to be a commercial pilot. He says neither the terrorist attacks nor this weekend's crash in Florida has made him change his mind. Local flight instructors say there are safety precautions in place to prevent what happened in Florida from happening here. The First Flight Aviation School keeps its planes chained up, locked, and the staff keeps an eye on the fleet from the office. So a person can't just walk in, grab a key, and, and take off in an airplane. Holcomb says she thinks about her son's safety, but she tries to keep it in perspective. He'll be getting his driver's license about the same time he gets his flying uh, certificate, so I don't know which one is a little bit more concerning in my, in my regard. I think the driving, actually, I worry about more than the flying. Now, you can be any age to take flying lessons, but you have to be 17 years old to get a private pilot's license. The FAA, among other things, requires a minimum of 40 hours of flying experience. I'm Colleen May, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. Bright kid. Yeah. Thanks, Colleen. Energy Secretary Spencer Abraham visited the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Repository site today, but not without Nevada politicians speaking out against his visit. The politicians don't want the federal government to think that other federal projects here could buy support for Yucca Mountain. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Cindy Caesars at the Yucca Mountain office here in the Valley. Cindy. Well, that's right. Nevada politicians didn't want to appear to be supporting the Yucca Mountain project by joining uh, Secretary uh, Abraham on his tour today. We're going to make sure that Secretary Abraham is not successful. But if he is successful, the people of Nevada and this country should know that the fight has just begun. And fighting that battle is a bipartisan united front of city, state, and federal politicians. They are against the Department of Energy's proposal to store 77,000 tons of radioactive waste from 36 states at the nuclear repository. The study of the Yucca Mountain project has already cost $7 billion. Now the federal government is considering creating an anti-terrorism center at the Nevada test site. But politicians felt they shouldn't join Secretary Abraham today on his Yucca Mountain tour for fear of sending the wrong signal. We did not want mixed messages to go forward. Like Nevada was somehow, uh, we'll take the we'll take the terrorism center if you you know for Yucca Mountain. We didn't want that, and so we wanted to make it very clear that we will never uh, take any kind of benefits uh, for taking the nuclear waste at the Nevada test or at Yucca Mountain. As Lisa Johnson mentioned earlier in the show, Tom Ridge, the director of Homeland Security, was scheduled to visit the Nevada test site as a potential anti-terrorism center this Wednesday with Senator Harry Reid. That trip has now been canceled. Cindy Caesar, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. All right, Cindy, thank you very much. Las Vegas Valley has something to celebrate. It's cleaner air. The valley has gone three consecutive years without violating the federal air quality standard for carbon monoxide. But before the EPA takes the valley off its list of areas with serious air quality problems, it will have to approve a clean air plan proposed by the state. When the valley is off the list of problem areas, it can get some much needed federal highway money. Mayor Oscar Goodman, State of the City. 
ended just moments ago with the mayor shedding new light on many of the issues currently facing Las Vegas. He talked about the accomplishments of the city, but also the problems facing Las Vegas, especially in the wake of September 11th. Eyewitness News reporter Carol Wilkinson joins us with the latest. Carol. Well, absolutely, Gary and Polly. The mayor talked about the effects of September 11th on our economy, on the people who live here, on the jobless situation that's going on here. And the mayor also began his speech by touching upon the fact that Las Vegas is a great city and that he enjoys being its mayor. He also talked about a number of giant steps being made here, like the establishment of more Spanish-speaking programs and the building of more parks than ever before. But then the mayor addressed the issue he called the tough one, the homeless problem in Las Vegas. In order for us to be a first-class city, we can't allow the situation to exist out there as it presently does. It's shameful, and it's all of our responsibilities. It's the private sector's responsibility, and by setting up this charitable corporation, they'll be able to donate money, as one company has already come forward and done, and we'll be able to take that money, and we'll be able to transition these folks back into a useful member of society. Now the mayor says that the city has given $100,000 towards the formation of a corporation to get the community and government involved in solving the problem of the homeless here in Las Vegas. And we'll have more on the mayor's comments and some of the solutions to the problems that we all face here in Las Vegas coming up tonight on Eyewitness News at 11. Sounds right. good. We'll talk to the mayor live in a few minutes. Absolutely, you will. Okay, thanks, thanks Carol. Carol.